Dear sisters and brothers, welcome to the online broadcast of this Mass for Friday, week one of Lent, the 6th of March, 2020. Our entrance antiphon. Set me free from my distress, O Lord. See my lowliness and suffering and take away all my sins. For our entrance hymn, join us with Where Charity and Love Prevail. Where charity and love prevail, there God is ever found, brought here together by Christ's love. By love are we thus bound. With grateful joy and holy fear, His charity we learn. Let us with heart and mind and soul now love Him in return. Forgive we now each other's faults as we our faults confess. And let us love each other well in Christian holiness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you and with your Spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of our sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, we pray, may be so conformed to the Pascha observances that the bodily discipline now solemnly begun may bear fruit in the souls of all. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, If the wicked man renounces all the sins he has committed, respects my laws, and is law-abiding and honest, he will certainly live. He will not die. All the sins he committed will be forgotten from then on. He shall live because of the integrity he has practiced. What? Am I likely to take pleasure in the death of a wicked man? It is the Lord who speaks, and not prefer to see him renounce his wickedness and live. But if the upright man renounces his integrity, commits sin, copies the wicked man, and practices every kind of filth, is he to live? All the integrity he has practiced shall be forgotten from then on. But this is because he himself 
has broken faith and committed sin. And for this, he shall die. But you object. What the Lord does is unjust. Listen, you house of Israel. Is what I do unjust? Is it not what you do that is unjust? When the upright man renounces his integrity to commit sin, and dies because of this. He dies because of the evil that he himself has committed. When the sinner renounces sin to become law-abiding and honest, he deserves to live. He has chosen to renounce all his previous sins. He shall certainly live. He shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you, O Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? If you, O Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O oh, let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleading. If you, O oh Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? If you, O oh Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? But with you is found forgiveness. For this we revere you. If you, O oh Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? My soul is waiting for the Lord. I count on his word. My soul is longing for the Lord more than watchmen for daybreak. Let the watchmen count on daybreak and Israel on the Lord. If you, O Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? Because with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Israel indeed he will redeem from all in his iniquity. If you, O Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Seek good and not evil, so that you may live, and that the Lord God of hosts may really be with you. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If your virtue goes no deeper than that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. We have learned how it was said to our ancestors, you must not kill. And if anyone does kill, you must answer for it before the court. But I say this to you, anyone who is angry with his brother will answer for it before the court. If a man calls his brother fool, he will answer for it before the Sanhedrin. If a man calls him renegade, he will answer for it in hellfire. So then, if you are bringing your offering to the altar, and then remember your brother has something against you, leave your offering there before the altar. Go and be reconciled with your brother first, and then come back and present your offering. Come to terms with your opponent in good time while you are still on the way to the court with him. Or he may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the officer and you'll be thrown into prison. I tell you solemnly, you will not get out till you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, at the very beginning of this week of Lent, on Monday, the theme of Lent was spelled out when the Lord said, Be holy, for I am holy. And then holiness was spelled in terms of charity to our brothers and sisters. Today, this theme of holiness again surfaces. What is holiness? Holiness is to be measured in terms of living a life of integrity. God is holiness because God is integrity. Which means to say, what God thinks, He does. And so being and doing, they go together. So living a life of integrity is what brings us happiness. If there is division in our heart, it is because our life is not one of integrity. What we believed, what we know to be right, we do not do. We do what is wrong, what is evil. We go against ourselves. The real conflict in the world today is the conflict that begins in our heart. If a person is at peace with himself, if a person bears no grudges against people, if a person is not ambitious, selfishly, competitive, if a person does not wish to destroy others, he is always happy wherever he may be. So the real division in the world comes from the heart of the individual. Those of us who are wounded, we tend to inflict our wounds on others. That is why I have always said, hurting people hurt people. But you know, the Lord wants to heal us. This is what today's scripture readings is all about. The Lord wants to heal our broken heart, our wounded heart. The Lord wants to redeem us. All that he needs to do, as the Lord said through the prophet Ezekiel, if the wicked man renounces all the sins he has committed, respects my laws and is law-abiding and honest, he will certainly live. He will not die. So the moment we repent, the moment we decide to live a life of integrity, we are at peace. It's almost immediately. The Lord is not waiting to punish us for our sins. Don't ever think that God is keeping a record of all the wrong things that you have done and He's adding the punishment uh, day after day and then, boom, uh, send you to hell. God is not like that. Love does not keep a record of wrongs. The moment we repent, everything is forgotten. Remember the story of the prodigal son. The moment the son repented, the father never asked him, why did you do such a stupid thing? Squander all my property away? The father said nothing. Just gave him back his sonship. And so God treats us in this manner. Because we are his children. Isn't it true, those of you who are parents, if your child has become wayward, no matter what happened to this child, he could become a gangster, a drug addict, has done all kinds of wrong things. But the moment he comes back to you, as a parent, you will forgive. No mother will not forgive her child. That is why in Isaiah 49, verse 14, the Lord said, even if the mother forsakes her child, I will never forsake you. But you know, my dear brothers and sisters, the sadness of the world is this. The world cannot forgive. The world wants to keep a record of wrongs of people who have done wrong. The world is not interested to save or to redeem or to restore a person. 
the world wants to kill, want to destroy. The world wants enemies to be destroyed altogether. The world is not concerned about helping the person who has gone wrong, a wicked person, to live a new life. The world is not interested to give you a second chance. You look at the world today. Look at the social media. The moment you have done something wrong, the world will shame you until you can no longer face anyone in this world. They want you to be totally destroyed, reputation gone, so that you have no way to redeem yourself and so that you will commit suicide and end your life. This is how the world treats those who have done wrong. That is why today in the Gospel, Jesus is very clear, Christian does not behave in this manner. Jesus says, if your brother has something against you, before you bring the gifts to the altar, let us be reconciled. And it's very important. If we call ourselves Christians and we are bearing grudges and hatred and taking revenge, we are not fit to be called Christians. We are not worthy to be called His disciples. That's why forgiveness, forgiveness is not just for ourselves, but to redeem the person. And I think that is very critical for us. If we want to find happiness in life. You know, when a person suffers, has done the wrong thing, violence and revenge will destroy the person even more. And I tell you the truth, even so-called many pious holy Catholics, they behave in this manner. They write to me letters of complaints about some people have wronged them. And they want the bishop to bring justice. But the truth is, it's not justice that they are seeking. When I read underlying their complaint letters, what they want me is to destroy, to hurt, to humiliate, to expose, to make the person lose face completely. It's not about helping the person to become better, but to get rid of their enemies. This is not the way of the gospel. That is why even when prisoners are sent to prison, prison is not a place of punishment, actually. It is not true. Because if you punish a prisoner, you can be sure when the prisoner is released, he will be doubly worse. Because the reason why he is in prison is because he's wounded. Because he's living a wrong life. He has been ignorant, or maybe because he's bitter with the world. That's why he commits crimes and he's in prison. And you send him to prison, you punish him, you humiliate him. His resentment will grow. And when he is released, he will do even more harm. That's why prison actually is not so much a place of punishment. Really, it is a place of rehabilitation. It is to give a person a second chance to help the person to be restored, to come to his senses that what he's doing is destroying himself and his loved ones. That's the whole purpose of prison. To keep him safe from the evil world. That's why prison is actually a very safe place. I think it's the safest place. Especially for drug addicts, it's the safest place. Because the moment they go into the world, they'll be tempted. They are weak. But you know, my dear brothers and sisters, that is why it's integrity that will give us happiness in life. Conversely, in today's first reading from Prophet Ezekiel, this is what we read as well. If you have been a good man and now you practice evil, and what did God said, you will also die. And the Jews complain, oh, God, no, we have been giving money to the church, we have been doing so much good works, and now I have seen I got to die. The problem is merits are not in the mind of God. It's not merits. Merits cannot save us. 
If marriage can save us, it's in so far as marriage help us to live a good life. So if we have done a lot of good work, hopefully you tend towards goodness more than evil. But marriage don't save us. So if we do evil, the moment we do evil, we lose our integrity. We lose our happiness. So it's not God punishing us, really. God does not punish us. I want to say this. God does not punish us. Our sins punished us. The consequences of our sins destroyed us. God does not punish. And so, if you don't punish yourself, if you don't want to destroy yourself, then live a good life. Live a life of integrity. And you will find peace. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Bless be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the voice and the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Accept the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, by which in your power and kindness you will us to be reconciled to yourself and our salvation to be restored. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for through bodily fasting you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtues and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven, and the blessed seraphim, worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with us in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending out your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given out for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, you blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co heirs with eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait in blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For oh, the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said the apostles, peace I live to you, my peace I give to you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of
peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sight of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes with the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be So let us make the act of spiritual communion together. Lord Jesus, you have taught us in today's gospel that if we have something against our brother, we should lift our gifts at the altar and be reconciled with our brother first before we offer this gift. Lord Jesus, even though many times I've received you sacramentally, my life has not changed. My heart has not been moved. I received you like a wafer without any real change in my heart, simply because I have not repented. I have not lived a life of integrity. I have not allowed you to come into my life. And simply because there is too much resentment, lack of forgiveness in my heart that shuts you out of my life. So Lord Jesus, I want you to come into my heart this morning. I want you to fill me with your spirit of love and forgiveness. Grant me the grace of reconciliation with those people who have hurt me or those whom I have hurt so that I can truly be at peace within myself. Give me the grace to live the life of the gospel so that truly my life is aligned with yours so that I can find perfect peace and joy in my life. Amen.
at the springs. May the holy refreshment of your sacrament restore us anew, O Lord, and cleansing us of all ways, take us up into the mystery of salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Let us end this Eucharistic celebration with our recessional hymn, The Prayer of St. Francis. Make me a channel of your peace, where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord, and where there's now true faith in you. Make me a channel of your peace, where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light, and where there's sadness, ever joy. O oh, Master, grant that I may never seek so much to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, in giving to ourselves that we receive and in dying that we're born to eternal life.